So, um, thank you for having us. It's really a pleasure to be here. And so I want to introduce you to some folks. Anita is in our uh, Consumer Protection Unit. And uh, her, along with um, an intern, put this together, a UMass intern. So I'm really thrilled, you know, the whole thing. And then Maddie is our intern, and she's from Union College. And uh, so she's with us for the summer to, to help uh, out with all our programs. And of course, Rachel is, is she's in charge of our uh, Elder Protection and Disabled Persons Unit. So, uh, so I, I think you're gonna really enjoy it because uh, it really gives you that real life stuff, you know, how things are kind of scammed. So let's try to figure out two teams. One, yep. Rachel, why don't you? We need a team one and a team two. So I don't know if you folks. So let's see. Um, do we want to? You know what I can do? I could do team one could be this front row here. You, sir, down to you, ma'am, you four. Yeah. And then team two could be back here, the second row. We got the back rowers and we got the front rowers. So does that sound good? Okay. So do you have move on yet? No, that's fine. You're that's all fine. set. You're good where you are. So, so we'll do team one up here, team two back there. Okay. So sounds All right. Good. So the way it's going to work, um, there's going to be a board with some categories. So if we want to switch to that. So we have four categories. We have credit reporting, senior scams. Elder Law, and Senior Safety. And so Team 1 is going to go first. You're going to pick a amount, and you're going to pick a category. We will ask you a question. You can talk amongst yourselves for the correct answer. And then if you get the answer correct, you get those points. And then we will move on to Team 2, and you will get to select a amount and a category. And we'll just go back and forth like that. Alrighty, it's very, that's the way it's going to work. The idea, have fun. Yep. Mm -hmm. Learn some good consumer uh, tips. And we have goodies for everyone. Yeah. All right. Yep, we have prizes at the end. <laughs> All right, so team one. Senior scams. Senior scams for how much? Five hundred. Five hundred. <laughs> we got some real gamblers here. Five hundred. Right off the bat. Big you know? <laughs> 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 Somebody's like, who's reading your question? What is the question? So, and I'll do the answers. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Actually, Matt, do you want to keep score? Sure. Yeah. So team one's in the front, team two's in the back. Okay. The Social Security Office will mail new Medicare cards between April 2018 and April 2019. Your new card will have a Medicare number that's unique to you instead of your Social Security number. This will help you help to protect your identity. What do you need to do to activate the card? Can we read the answers too? Oh, do you want me to read the answers? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, a, when the Social Security Office calls, confirm your Medicare or Social Security number so they can send you a new card. B, pay a minimal charge for your new card and verify your personal information. Or C, do nothing. The Social Security Office will mail the new card to you. A. C. C. All right. So, no, it's, we, we got the front row. So, you guys come up with. Yeah, you, three plus four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So which which uh, one do you think it is? I say C. C, 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 C A. We'll go with majority rules. This is the democracy here today. <laughs> <laughs> so, the last one. Uh, C. 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 And uh, we got two C's and we C. Okay, we got three C's. We're gonna go with C. They're outvoting you, <laughs> and they are very smart. C. Uh. Do nothing. You don't have to remember when people give you calls, it's usually a scam. Okay, most banks and other places don't call you. So C, so uh, $500 to team, to team, uh, team one. All right, so team two, um, what category would you like? Let's go with senior scams. 400? Yeah. Okay. All right. Continuing the big gambling that we have going on here. The phone rings. It's the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS. The agent states that you owe the United States of America money for unpaid taxes. What should you do immediately? Hang on. 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 Hang
see the answers. Okay. <laughs> Which answer is your your final answer? Number B. 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 And yes. the yes. answer is B. B. Hang on. Yes. The I, IRS does not call you. Okay. Just remember, the IRS does not make phone calls to you, so you don't have to. Exactly, hang up. But it's just to keep that general rule is banks and other places usually do not call you. It's a very rare incident. So, so good, $400 to team two. All right, you guys. Um, senior safety? Okay, senior safety for 500. Isolation is a risk factor for elder abuse. About 29% of people 65 and older live alone. About how many women aged 75 and older live alone? A, 37%, B, 45%, C, 50%, D, 60%. We all know that the women outlive the guys, right? You know, <laughs> with the exception to the rule. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're you're a minority, you know. So, uh, so how many uh, how many women, 75 and older, are living alone? Six. 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 D. Okay, we got D, 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 B, and B. So so D has it, that majority. So let's go with D. Oh. It is. Pretty close. It was C, 50%. That's a huge percentage. That's a huge percentage of women over 75. So again, being more vulnerable because you're alone and maybe more susceptible to those those scams. So, okay, team two, you get to pick your category. Okay, ladies, what do you pick? Senior safety. Senior safety. We're going for 500. 500 has been taken. Oh, we'll so you get a pinky. It's kind of a pinky we'll color. 400. 400. 400. In Massachusetts, all crimes against elders are felonies, which are more serious crimes and carry harsher penalties. Which of the following is not a felony? A, assault and battery on an elder. B, indecent assault and battery on an elder or person with disability. C, assault and battery by means of a dangerous weapon on an elder. D, failure to remove dog waste on an elder's dog property. waste, number D. Are you sure about it? That yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Boy, you guys got a cream puff of a question. <laughs> yeah. right. So D, you failure to remove. Of a group. So that's, that's a fun question. Just but to be clear, it should be, but it's not. <laughs> so what Massachusetts did a number of years ago is they put in an extra protection, an extra penalty for elders so that, you know, uh, that elders get that extra protection and people are punished more severely for preying on the elderly or particularly where it comes to physical assault. All right, you All right, guys. Team one. Team one, you get to pick. Scams. Okay. Uh, 500. Well, yeah. So 300, 300, 200, and 100 are left. Oh, uh, three. Okay. Three hundred. Western Union or MoneyGram are money transfer companies. What are these companies commonly used for? A, to send money to someone you know, family or friends in other countries because it is a quick way to get cash to people you care about. B, criminals like money wiring companies because wiring money is like sending cash. When you wire money, you cannot get it back. C, if you don't use traditional banks or credit unions, you can pay bills through money wiring services. D, to send money online or in person for cash pickup or direct to a bank. Some offer inmate services in transfers to mobile wallets. E, all of the above. We have an e, e I hear from team one. That's the consensus. All right. Very good. E, all of the above. All those things are what the, uh, the wire services. So uh, again, when scams take place over the phone, like the, the granny scam where they say your, your granddaughter's in jail in Canada or someplace else, they usually want you to go down and wire that money. And again, avoid it. All right, team two, your selection. Okay, ladies, what do you want to go with? 
Credit reporting, 500. <laughs> when you co-sign a loan, the entire debt amount goes on your credit report. What happens if the person you co-sign for stops paying? You're stuck with the bill. <laughs> <laughs> so A, if you co-sign for the purpose of helping your loved one qualify for a loan while they re rebuild their credit, and they promise to repay the loan, then you, the co-signer, has no legal obligation to repay the loan, and it will not appear on your credit report. B, co-signing means that you agree to pay the loan if the borrower defaults. The debt and any missed or late payments will be reported to the credit bureaus. We'll go number B. <laughs> All right. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Ah, yeah. yes. Yes. You yep. are right. You're right. Right. stuck with it. Yeah, you're <laughs> stuck with it. So if it. sometimes, you know, if you have a little money in savings that you feel like you can loan to someone, and you don't have to get it back, maybe that's a better route than trying mm -hmm. to co-sign with someone, because if you co-sign, you're stuck. And there's you all of you this, the your credit goes. who is the, the primary, so that's... But you're right about if, 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 you're, if, you're, loaning them, if you're loaning them to a okay. case, uh, I'll get off for how much? Exactly. Not probably, for 500. Steven, age 63, has just retired after a distinguished career. He is looking forward to spending more time in his garden, reading the morning papers, and taking his wife out for breakfast. What type of person is most likely to financially take advantage of Steven? A, a teller at his bank who can look up his personal information. B, his nephew who is unemployed and needs Stephen's financial assistance until he can get back on his feet. C, a pharmacist who can gain access to his Medicare number. D, a waitress at Stephen's favorite restaurant who writes down his credit card information. That's not an easy one. So we're looking for the most likely answer. No. <laughs> back. So what do you think? Uh, we've got D. Uh, how about A? It could be any one of them. We have D. How about if we go with D? Right. Okay. Uh, D is the response. Yes, Correct. Yep, this, this question touches upon a lot, of, a lot of information. So the number one crime against elders that's prosecuted by our office is financial exploitation. And studies have shown that the most, these crimes are oftentimes committed by family members and adult children are the number one category. Yep. Right, nephew wasn't mm -hmm. huh? And trying to take yep. advantage, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies, what do we want? Um, elder law. Okay, elder law. For 400, yep. Yeah. Anna, 72, has recently hired a personal care assistant, or PCA, to help her run errands, clean the house, and prepare meals. What information should she provide to her new PCA to help make her job easier? A, her debit card number so the PCA can make purchases at the grocery store, pick up the dry cleaning, and get cash for Anna. B, her bank account number so the PCA can make sure her bills are paid on time. C, her Medicare number so the PCA can make sure Anna has all her medications and medical equipment. D, a copy of her house key just in case Anna falls and cannot come to the door. E, all of the above. E. None of the above. No, no, none of the above. No, all of the above. No, the above. No, no. Definitely don't do all of the above. I don't know. Say E. You say E. I say E. Oh, we lost. So we hear oh, it. There's a couple of E's. Any other? Yeah. 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 Right, so the consensus is E. Yeah. yeah. None of the above. So all those things are a, a PCA is very good, but they're not supposed to have personal information. Okay, and also access to the house, you know, 
if that person is physically able, they can open the door. There's no reason for them to come after hours. And by the way, if, 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 if an elder tends to fall, then maybe they need to get a, a device that could, could signal for somebody to come. That's more important. So, Don't you have one? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It, 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 it sends out a signal to the company and yeah. to the uh, and that gives that uh, call yeah. to the first responders. So, yeah. so good. So, no, excellent. I use it to banks. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. All right, so we got the next category for Team One. Senior safety for 300. When allegations of elder abuse are reported, that is when the Adult Protective Service Agency, or APS, is called in. Which of the following is true about Adult Protective Services? A. Adult Protective Services has the power to make a decision without the elder's input if the elder has capacity to do so. B. APS seeks to achieve freedom, safety, the least disruption of lifestyle, and care alternative. Elders can choose to maintain their current living situation provided they are competent to choose, do no harm to others, and commit no crime. C. If APS feels the elder needs assistance, they can take up to 50% of the elder's income to provide services for the elder. D. Police have the right to lock up a senior on APS's recommendation in a cell overnight to keep them safe. <laughs> Not in South County, there's good police departments. <laughs> so which of those is true? Yep. I hear B. Two Bs? Does that sound like a consensus? Yes. All right, B is the uh, response. Oh, Excellent. Yep. <laughs> so el Elder, uh, you know, the, uh, the protective services tries to minimize whatever involvement it is. So they don't want to take over anybody's life. They want to work with that elder. And it could be because of maybe a disability or maybe some, some illness that's created that situation where maybe they're neglecting their care. But they, they, they want to come in and, and be least disruptive. So, all right, we've got uh, team two. <laughs> what is the best way to keep your personal and financial information safe if a company that you do business with has been hacked? A. Put a credit freeze on all three of your credit reports, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. This will prevent anyone, including you, from opening up new credit using your name and information. B, contact the Social Security office and request a new Social Security number. C, pay for credit monitoring from each of the three credit reporting agencies, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. D, do nothing because at this point you have a solid established credit record. A, A, A. I mean B. No, A. No. A. <laughs> you think I put my glasses on? Right. <laughs> Excellent, it, it's A, yeah. And the good news is starting um, September 21st, all the credit freezes are going to be free. Congress passed legislation to make them all free. So if you haven't done it and you're thinking about it, you know, it'll be free then, or it's $5 now for each of the three, so. Mm -hmm. Credit reporting is going. Credit reporting 300. 700 to 850 is an excellent credit score. The higher your score, the lower your interest rate will be on loans, credit cards, and insurance. What factors are used to calculate a credit score? A. A person's age, missed loan payments, and marital status. B. Missed loan payments, high credit card balances, and ethnic origin. C, high credit card balances, personal bankruptcy, and number of years of education. D, 
D, missed loan payments, high balances on credit cards, and personal bankruptcy. That's a tough question. It's kind of tricky. I take D. D. Does that sound good? D. Okay. So the response is D, and the answer is D. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, those are the three major things that, that go into the yeah. interest rate. Like your age. Obviously, yeah. yeah obviously, the, the missed loan payments is really big in bankruptcy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So team two. How about Barbara? Barbara, pick a, pick one. Or Frank. Frank. Pick the last one. Oh, all right. Um, how about senior scams? Did we have three hundred already? Yeah. So there's two hundred. All right. Senior scams for two hundred. Phone rings. It's your grandson asking for help, and he's in trouble. You say his name to verify that it is indeed your grandson. He's in a Canadian jail and needs cash to get out. The arresting officer gets on the phone and explains that your grandson will spend the night in jail unless you pay his bail ASAP. What should you do? So A, call his parents to verify that he is in Canada. B, ask your grandson a question only he would know. C, call his cell phone to verify that he is in Canada. Or D, all of the above. Well, I would tell him that he was in trouble. <laughs> You're part of the tough love world. Yeah. Yeah. In theory. Yeah. D. D. I go D. Everybody agree? Yeah. Good answer. All Ooh, the above. You, know, you just want to verify those things because usually when they do this, they call it a granny scam or yeah. a grampy scam. And usually they try to get you to name your grandson or granddaughter. In other words, you know, your granddaughter's calling and you say, oh, is that Marie or is it yeah. Bob? And then they've got the name and they, they yeah. play off that. So, you know, you do doing that stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, quite, fra quite frankly, in our jurisdiction, you're not going to get a call from a grandson or granddaughter. Oh, okay. I got one from a nephew. Yeah? Yeah. This is your nephew. I'm in jail. And I said, oh, Bob, is that you? My nephew was not Bob. Yes, it's Bob. Or end the conversation. Yeah. But a legitimate call. You're not going to get a legitimate no. call. Oh, no. I mean, no. this, this whole stuff about no. Canada, no. Mexico, no. and everything else, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just this scam. I have a cute story. It won't take long. About a, a, an elderly person that I was taking care of at one time. And she told me this, that her grandson uh, was out with people on a Saturday night. and. He knew that he couldn't go back to his, call his mother or whatever, so he called his grandmother. Could she come and pick him up? So she went and picked him up, brought him to her house, put him to bed, and that was that. When he got up the next day, he comes, comes down at noon time and he looks at her and he, she says, you know what, she says, my uh, garage needs cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, didn't dare say. <laughs> That's a good trade-off. Excellent. I'll remember that when my kids call sometime. All right. Got the list. Yeah. All right. So we got team one that's going to make this up. Yeah, team one. We've got uh, all the categories are open at different amounts. Yeah. Um, elder law. Elder Walk for 300, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. George is 86 years old and he's starting to forget things, although he is still able to manage his finances and assets. What if that changes and George loses his mental capacity? His daughter will automatically be able to make financial decisions on his behalf and manage her father's assets if this document was signed previously. A, healthcare proxy, B, a living will, will, C, a limited power of attorney, D, a screening power of attorney. I've never heard of screening. 
<laughs> you have to pick your answer first, then we can talk about it. I think you narrowed it down to either C or D. What do you think? D. All right, we're going to go with D. That was a firm answer. So, all right. So, D, a springing power of attorney. What that is, is that the power of attorney doesn't take effect until the disability or the incompetence kind of sets in. So that's that's what spring. It springs into action. Yeah. It it's not good until that that set of circumstances requires that power of attorney. Okay. So What's a limited power of attorney. A limited would be uh, a limited say, to a bank or a it could be limited to certain things. It uh -huh. could be just to handle your bank, or it could be maybe to handle a real estate closing. Um, so, you know, but those are the things that, you know, in elder planning, you want to look at and talk to, you know, whoever the, your uh, legal advisor is when you're doing that. So, Great. yeah. Team two. Team two, you got the next selection. Okay, what do you want? What do you want? Which one do you want? Senior safety. Senior, senior safety. Senior safety. Okay. Yeah. Approximately 10,000 people turn age 65 every day. What are the chances that a senior will become a victim of elder abuse? A, 1 in 10, B, 1 in 100, C, 1 in 1,000, D, 1 in 10,000. You guys have been gambling all morning. Yeah. <laughs> you should know the odds here, you know? That's what I think. B. Yeah. 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 B. I think B. I could be wrong. Okay, well, let's, let's see who, you've got B. What, what do you think? C. I'll think C. We'll go with C. All right, the consensus has C. Oh, my God. All right, so really? that tells you how prevalent it is, how common it is for elders to be preyed upon. Remember, this is a wonderful group. A lot of trusting folks out there, and the scammers know. They, they, they know how to, how to kind of take advantage of people that uh, have good intent and are, are honest, and uh, they want to take advantage of that situation. So one in 10, it just mm -hmm. lets you know that, you know, in this room, you know, one, two, three people are gonna get preyed upon and hopefully not uh, be, uh, actually you probably get preyed upon every day. Do you answer the phone? Yeah. You know, I mean, all these phone things that happen every day, okay. it's just remarkable, so. All right. I, I, uh, we learned one thing, and I think it was at one of your presentations, that when you get a phone call, my name is John, and the individual who think the call uh, said, and I say, he says, is this John? And I say, yes. I put my foot in the trap. That's right. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, just the, the real simple rule, don't talk to strangers. Right. You know, mm -hmm. for the most part, yes. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, we got another category to Okay. Credit reporting 300. Credit reporting 300. You miss the August payment on your credit card bill, but you pay the balance full in October. Will this affect your credit report and score? A, yes, your credit score will go down, leading to higher interest rates on your loans, and you could be charged a fee, which means you will pay more. B, no, you will be current in your payments, which is what is important. C, no, you are allowed to be late on payments for twice the life of the loan without it being reported to the credit bureaus. So we've got A and B. You're going you're gonna to be, you're gonna be the... All right, so it seems like the consensus is... I heard A. So, yeah, so we went A. A. All right. Your credit score will go down. Yeah. So no that's, freebies. Yeah. So just as you all know, you've been doing it your whole lifetime. 
pay your bills on time. Right. And if you that. can't, um, a lot of times you can call those credit card companies and stuff and try to get them to defer payments or kind of work with you to come up with something that's right for you so you don't damage your credit. Okay, team two, you get the next pick. Every category is open. Elder law. Elder law. Elder law for 200? Yep. Mary has a medicine cabinet full of painkillers she no longer needs that were prescribed to her after back surgeries. What should she do with the medication? A. Flush the pills down the toilet. B. Take the pills to a drop box at her local police department. C. Tie the pills securely in a plastic bag and throw them in the trash. D. Give the pills to her family or friends for safekeeping. B. 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 We're going to go with so, B. B is the answer. <laughs> yep. So take them to a drop box. So, uh, so Rachel is the coordinator of our uh, take back, all our boxes. So we have them in just about every police department, some of the small departments. So um, in, yep. in and South there's, no, there's, there's no questions asked. Yep, there's one in Deerfield, there's one in Sunderland, I don't think Conway has one no, or, or Waitley, but all the major ones. And it's mm -hmm. right back there that, that sign got drugs. So just bring them down. And it doesn't have to be prescription. It can be any kind of medication. So mm -hmm. and it, what's really important for seniors is to get rid of expired drugs too, because you know the, the drugs may, may not be uh, effective anymore. And the other thing is it's easy for folks to um, maybe take the wrong medications if, you know, um, if they're hanging around. So uh, so if it's not you, then at least maybe a senior you know maybe has a whole cabinet full, they should box them up and bring them down to that local police department. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, team one, credit reporting for 200. That's an even. <laughs> a credit report is a snapshot of your credit history. Credit bureaus collect information and create credit reports based on that information. Where can you get your an annual free credit report from each of the three credit bureaus? TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian are those, are those bureaus. A, annualcreditreport.com. B, freecreditreport.com. C, from the U.S. Department of Finance. D, the Federal Trade Commission. Hey. All right, I'll be back out. Okay. Oh, Nancy. Nancy. Okay. All right. So, so we get T. So, what do we have for um, for an answer? We got. Uh, did somebody say A? I said A. A. And is that the consensus? A. Okay. The consensus response is A. The answer is A. Annual Credit Report. Dot com. Okay, uh, all the categories are open and there's a uh, hundred dollar for each one. Which one are we doing? Okay, so back to team two. Okay, team two, what, any category? Senior scam. Okay. okay. There's a risk-free, one-time, free trial offer for a new face cream, and all you have to do is pay for shipping. The ad tells you to act now before it's too late. Since shipping and handling is only 99 cents, you click on the offer and enter your credit card information. What is the catch? A, you may end up looking so good, you'll have to deal with all the new attention. B, in the fine print it says if you don't cancel and return the product within 15 days, you're signed up for ongoing monthly shipments of the cream charged to the credit card you used to pay for the 99 cent shipping. C, nothing, because if you use your credit card, you have the right to cancel any purchase within 60 days, regardless of what that ad says. What's the question? Oh, this is ours? That's yours, yeah. Okay. I think B. Yes, I'll go with B. So we hear B. Is that is that the consensus? B. Okay. Yep. You get it smart. <laughs> 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 I 
you could have backed up and been with us. <laughs> so you, then you're hooked into this, and it, it, usually the price goes up. The yeah. free, the free mm -hmm. trial, it's yeah. not just the free trial, yeah. it could be $50 a month. So yeah. these free trials yeah. are really, I don't want to call them a complete scam because some people use that, but it really can lead to really yeah. high bills yeah. you know, on a monthly basis. Okay. Which of the following elder abuse statements are true? A. Bruising is not necessarily indicative of physical abuse. B. Some elders who are sexually abused may not identify it as such. C. Financial exploitation may result from consent obtained as a result of threats, misrepresentation, or coercion. D, the more dependent an elder is on a caregiver to meet an essential need, the potential for finding neglect increases. E, all of the above. E is the response, and the answer is E, all of the yeah. above. All right, we've got two more categories that are open, credit reporting and senior safety. What would team two like? What would you like, credit reporting or senior safety? Senior safety. Senior safety. Senior safety for $100. $100. Triad is a community policing partnership between seniors, law enforcement, and service providers to increase safety through education and crime prevention. What is one thing Triad can't do? A. Reduce criminal activity that targets seniors. B. Provide legal advice or services. C. Alleviate seniors' fears of victimization, build confidence, and improve their quality of life. D. Build relationships between law, enforcement's and, law enforcement and seniors. So we're looking for the one thing they can't do. Oh, they can't do. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. A. One thing they cannot do. Yeah. And the answer is A. That's B. 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 So provide legal yeah. advice. So that's the one thing. You know, obviously the Triad program does a lot of things for crime prevention, but we they don't provide the the legal advice or, or counseling. So last category, you you don't have much of a choice. So credit <laughs> We did. Oh, we did this one. Yep, yeah. we did the this yeah, one. For some reason, it didn't light up. We oh. do have a bonus board. If you guys are up for the bonus, yes, we'll go bonus. Okay. Okay. We're going to bonus time. Right <laughs> board here. Okay, I think there's a little glitch with that question. <laughs> We're going to fix it. Bonus questions. They're mystery questions. Yeah. So team mystery one. Category. What would you like? We don't know about the category. It's kind of like, um, what is it in Jeopardy? What would they call it? It's not a high It's better than a hundred. It's like the potpourri or something like that. You should take steps to protect yourself before you hire a home improvement contractor. Which statement is false? A, ask for a detailed written contract and estimate. B, don't pay more than one third of the cost of the contract in advance. C, get the building permits on your own. This way the contractor can start the building project faster. D, check the status of a contractor's license and registration with the state. Which one is false? Response is C, and the answer is C. Oh, yeah. hey, good job. So one of the things, if you have a licensed contractor, you've checked them out and everything else, that person should be getting the permits. 
because they, they have those licenses and should be able to go out and get them and that way and it gets done. And if you do, yeah. yeah, it's true. If you do have a home improvement project that you're thinking about, I have a really good sheet and it's kind of a checklist of what you should do and what should be on the contract. And it's from the state. Um, so it's really helpful making sure that you're doing everything the right way, just in case something goes wrong. I would like one. <laughs> I'll send one over to you, Sue. <laughs> okay, team two, a bonus question. Which one would you like? 400. 400, all right. <clears throat> An individual is considered an elder in Massachusetts when he or she turns age 65. True or false? This so is legally speaking. When are you considered an elder at 65? Is that true? Alright, so true or false? True. Okay, the response is true. And actually, for those that are coming on that haven't turned 60 yet, that's when you're considered elder. Okay, so so it is it's earlier than most people think. So so those protections for elders they kick in at the age of 60. <coughs> All right, 300 bonus question. Sometimes dealers get flood cars. Cars that were damaged during hurricanes or severe weather. How can you avoid buying a flood car? A. Turn on the car and see if the instrument panel lights up. Check the heater, air conditioner, lights, and windshield wipers repeatedly. B. Check for signs of mud in the trunk, glove box, and under the seats. Carpeting may feel damp, look damaged, or mismatched. C. Get the car checked thoroughly by a mechanic you trust and get a vehicle history report to check for reported flood damage or signs of salvage title fraud. D. All of the above. C. So we hear C and then D. Which, which one? D. D. So the consensus is D. And so all of the above. Uh, so that nice used car from Houston. <laughs> or back a few years back in New Orleans, yeah, those aren't the, Maddie, the places you want to Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Press on the truck. Okay. Which statement is false about return, refund, and cancellation policies in Massachusetts stores? A. Stores only have to pre print it on the receipt. B. It needs to be posted so you can see it before you make a purchase. C. A store can have any return policy it chooses as long as it's posted. D. These policies don't apply to effective merchandise. Which one is incorrect or false? Okay. Which one is false? What would the A. So A. Okay. That's our response, and that's the answer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to have it on display somewhere in the store before you buy something, so then you know what your rights are. And the same thing for that one. So. We've got some bonus questions left. 200 for... Your utility company is on the phone and is claiming that you haven't paid your bill. They are threatening to cancel your service if you don't make a payment immediately. It doesn't seem right, but you don't want your service cut off. Which of the following should you not do? A, absolutely pay by a wire transfer through MoneyGram or Western Union so you won't lose your heat in the winter or air conditioning in the summer. B, hang up, get an old utility bill out, call the customer service number to verify that you indeed did pay your bill. C, report the scam and pass that information on to law enforcement agencies. Which one should you not do? So what would be the wrong thing to do? Oh, the wrong thing. Yeah. Okay. The response is from team one is A. 
And that's yeah. the answer. Right. Yeah. 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 Again, when companies or people ask for a wire transfer, that's the red flag. It's a, it's a scam. Yeah, and they're going to send you probably 10 bills before they cut off your electricity. Really? <laughs> Let's not try 200. <coughs> Team two. Many credit cards give a grace period. What is this grace period? A, the time between when you receive your bill and when you're charged a late fee. B, the time period during which you pay your credit card bill without paying a finance charge. C, the time period that credit card issuers offer new customers deals with low interest rates to get them to switch credit card companies. D, a fixed 30-day period you have before you're charged any interest. That's a tough one. So I hear B. Uh, is that a consensus answer? All right, why don't we go with B? That's the consensus. And B, correct. Very good. <laughs> 100. Well, that was funny. Don't oh, just go back. Greedy. Yeah. Let's pull it together. There we go. Okay, this is for team one. How can I protect my debit card, which is attached to my checking account? A. Keep your debit card number and PIN number private. B, it is riskier to use your debit card to buy online because your money is immediately withdrawn from your checking account, which is the account most commonly used to pay bills like rent, utilities, and car payments. C, if you lose your debit card, report it to your bank or credit union right away. Ask your bank to cancel the card and send you another card. D, all of the above. Okay, we have D's response from <coughs> team one. And that is correct. It's better to use your credit card when you buy things online because they a lot of credit cards have like guarantees or you can um, you can uh, dispute a charge if you didn't get your merchandise and sometimes it's easier to get your money back that way. So we got one more <coughs> bonus question worth a hundred dollars okay. and look at what the score oh, wait. is. I don't By the way, Maddie's been keeping a very good score here. <laughs> So, so we're tied. So oh my gosh. just to put the pressure on team two, if you get this correct, then you win. Oh yeah, my gosh. Tied. Absolutely. Both teams have been remarkable. Really good. So here's the bonus question. The Federal Trade Commission enacted the Do Not Call Registry on June 27th of 2003. What are ways scammers trick you into answering the telephone? That's horrible. <laughs> a, caller ID spoofing, changing their number to make you think it's someone else, like your bank or a local business. B, they impersonate a government agency like the IRS or US Marshals. C, they use robocalls, which uses a computerized auto dialer to deliver a pre-recorded message, as if from a robot trying to sell you something. D, all of the above. D, 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 yeah. So do I, I get D's the consensus response, yeah. and that's the answer, all of the above. Yeah. So, uh, so very, very tight. Uh, I want to congratulate both teams, but team number two, you came through. Last question. A recall. That's it, yeah. That's it. The good news is we have so thank, Hey, uh, what I want to do is, uh, you know, before we break, um, want to have Anita kind of tell you a little bit about uh, what she, what her unit does, our consumer protection. It's the oldest in the state. It's we, We've been working with the Attorney General for over 40 years. So it, it's, it's got a great tradition of helping consumers, you know, resolve their, uh, um, their problems. So here's Anita. I'll stand up and face everybody so you can hear me. So I work in the Consumer Protection Unit in the Northampton office, and Janice Garrett works in the Greenfield office. 
And what we do is we work with the Attorney General's office and we, um, if you have a problem with a business, so say you hire one of those home improvement contractors, you pay them some money, they do some of the work, but then they don't come back and don't finish up the work. You can call our office, we fill out a complaint form, and we can try to help you get your money back or get the work done. So if you have a problem like that, um, you can contact us. We also do a lot of education and outreach, so we try to help people with consumer issues. If you have a question about something that's going on, or maybe somebody calls you and it's kind of a funny call and you don't really know what to do about it, you can call us and talk to us as well. So um, anytime you have a question about um, loans, money, cars, anything like that, um, it's a consumer issue, we can try to help you or we can try to refer you to the appropriate individual or agency. So that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Rachel. Yes, so uh, my, name, oh, that's my name is Rachel Sample. I am the coordinator of our Elders and Persons with Disabilities at the Eastern at the Northwestern District Attorney's Office. And our unit specializes in investigating um, allegations of abuse against an elder or person with disabilities and we also prosecute crimes um, where elders and persons with disabilities have been victimized. So we deal strictly with criminal matters. So estate planning and wills and powers of attorney, we don't handle that. But I do have referral services. So if you do have a question about that, you can give me a call. Um, and we also, uh, so we do all things criminal. So if there's an instance of physical abuse, if someone has stolen a debit card, if someone has stolen cash, that sort of thing, we can help you take the steps to report it. So one thing I do want to mention about elder abuse is, um, as we had a question, isolation is a huge risk factor for all sorts of abuse against elders, whether that's an elder living alone who may be financially exploited, or if that's made perhaps a couple uh, who live very, very secluded and there may be a domestic violence situation going on. Um, so isolation is a huge risk factor. So the elders that I'm worried about are probably not in this room. However, we think that community awareness is very important because elders are very, it's, when, there, when there's abuse going on, it's, it's private, it's a family matter and you know, elders do not self-report. So that's why community awareness about what might be going on is very important. So if you ever have a question about something that you think might be going on with a family member or someone you know, please give me a call and I can talk to you about how to report it and what the steps are and what happens after a report is made. So we also have these bags for you. Secondary prize, so we have candy, we have bags, we have all sorts of good stuff. So I just quickly, very quickly, because uh, I want to Thank you very much for your patience. I know you've been here for a little while, but I just quickly want to go over what we have in our bag. So this, so as I mentioned earlier, financial exploitation is the number one crime that is prosecuted by our office against elders. So this is called Money Smarts for Older Adults. It's a resource guide. It's got all sorts of good information about exploitation, tips to avoid exploitation. It's got things about scams. It's a very, very good resource. We also have a consumer guide. This book right here. And this has a, a ton of good referral numbers about all things consumer. This is the, the, the mother of all consumer resource guides. It's great. Um, we also have um, a flyer in here for a program that I am I'm running. It's called Blankets for Kids. And our office is going to be accepting donations of handmade blankets. And what we are doing is we are partnering with Project Linus, which is a national nonprofit organization that provides blankets to children in need. And we are going to be providing blankets to our first responders around Hampshire and Franklin County to hand out to children as they come across them, whether that be a domestic situation where a child is, is present. Uh, an opioid related incident where a child may have witnessed an overdose. Um, so they will have them on hand to hand out to, uh, to children. So if anyone's interested in donating, my information is on that flyer. And last but not least, we have a little um, flyer for the Elders and Person with Disabilities Unit. It goes into a little bit more detail about what we can, what we do. And we also have some more, <laughs> as if this is enough information, we have some more um, pamphlets that goes over just about everything that we talked about today. So, that's 
everything. Nice <laughs> job. Yeah. And thank you all. Yes, thank you all so much for coming out. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to call me here at the senior center or stop by. That's good. You guys were good sports. So.